Uh, I got a new car, guys. Yo, what is going on, guys? So you guys can see that I got a new car, obviously. I talked about getting a Subaru for the longest time, and I went ahead and finally pulled the trigger. So behind me here is my new, new to me, 2009 Subaru STI. And just looking at it, you guys can tell that it is the hatchback version. Today, we are going to be doing something that I think is extremely crucial to do once you buy a used Subaru. So today, boys, we are going to be diving into this car and checking out the condition of the motor. Now, I do have paperwork from the previous owner stating that this motor was rebuilt about 40,000 miles ago and I had the paperwork to prove it. I had the receipts and I have all the work that was done to the motor along with just rebuilding the motor. It has a few goodies that I'm really excited about but I want to go ahead for myself and check out the condition of this motor because I don't know how the guy drove it before me. I know for a fact that I'm going to be beating the ever living crap out of this car. So before I go ahead and beat the ever living crap out of this car, I want to go ahead make sure that this thing is in okay condition and it's not going to blow up on me right away. Now if you guys are new to Subaru Motors, let me fill you guys in real quick. These motors are great they make uh, all right power they make great noises but these things are super temperamental if you don't maintain these things and you don't take preventative measures to make sure this doesn't blow up guess what these are gonna blow up on you. <laughs> so today we are going to be doing two important things. We are going to be checking the compression on this motor. We're gonna make sure that the compression is okay. And we are also gonna go ahead and do an oil change on it. I just wanna go ahead and make sure that there's no like metal or none of that nasty stuff in the oil, just for my peace of mind. I got this car for a reason. And I'm telling you guys right now that this thing is going to be used and abused. You guys know that I don't take it easy on my cars and this is no exception. This is going to get beaten on. So today we're gonna go ahead, check this thing out, make sure that it is ready to be used and abused. If if not, we're gonna take some preventative measures to make sure that this thing doesn't just blow up on us. Now, first thing first, you're gonna have to get your hands on a compression tester. I got this one from AutoZone. It's done me well. These things are pretty inexpensive. After you got a compression tester, you have to pray to the Subaru gods before you start this because doing spark plugs on a Subaru suck. And to do a compression test, you have to get to the spark plug holes. To get to the driver's side spark plug holes, all we're gonna have to do is probably remove the battery. To get to the passenger side, we have to remove the intake. Actually, on second thought, once I got rid of this little intake piece, I was able to kind of put my hand by the spark plug, so I don't think we're gonna need to take the whole intake off. I think I'll be able to fit these big meaty claws in between and uh, get to the spark plug plug. Spark plug plugs, is that spark plugs? Spark plugs. That sounded weird saying. I meant the coil packs. I don't know why I said spark plug plugs. It's very, very tight in there, but uh, I think we'll make do. Getting to the spark plugs is a little tricky. I definitely recommend getting a flashlight. For those of you who don't know, normal cars have spark plugs right at the top. Subarus lay flat, so their spark plugs are uh, this side and on this side. You kind of have to know what you're looking for, but if you look directly from the side of the motor, I'm gonna try my best to show you guys. So see that little plug right there with the colored wires going to it? Well, that is one of the coil packs. Now we're gonna take that one off and that is the further back one. All right, and then there is another one right on the right of it. It's gonna be really hard to show you guys on camera, but you guys can see it right there, kind of. A little bit there's one over there too so now there are two over here and then two over here you're gonna have to kind of look for this one too these ones are a lot easier to see because there's more room you guys can see one right there and then one right there so the quill packs are a 12 mil once you get them unthreaded you can just pull them out and then pull the spark plug out I tried not to take off the intake I was wrong just take off the intake, boys. It's a few screws. Now with the intake off, it's so much easier to access everything. So uh, I already got the first plug out, as you guys can see right there. It's just sitting on the side right over there. Now I already unscrewed the second one. I just want to show you guys that literally, you just unscrew the bolt a little bit, and then you just go ahead and wiggle it till it pops out. Oh, there you go. I'm not gonna lie, this is the, probably one of the worst parts about owning a Subaru. Spark plugs, dude, this stuff sucks. Okay. and. Here is the second one. There we go, both the plugs are out. Got those two plugs out, we still gotta pull the spark plugs itself out, and then we gotta pull it out on this side. After about a ton of effort and assortment of tools later, we finally got all the spark plugs out and they are right here. And honestly, they don't look too bad. These were most likely changed when the engine got rebuilt. So these are only about 40,000 miles old. So all the spark plugs are not too bad to be honest, but because it has been 40,000 miles, I figured let's just go ahead and change out the spark plugs anyways. So I got some brand new spark plugs 
from Subaru. These are the best spark plugs to get if you're aiming for under 500 horsepower. So I figured why not, if we're taking everything out and going through all this pain and effort, might as well just go ahead and switch out the spark plugs. But now that we got all the spark plugs out, now all we have to do is hook up the compression tester and then uh, we can start checking the compression. One thing is that I did want to check this compression when the engine was warm, but because it's so freaking cold outside and it took me a good amount of time to take all the spark plugs out, this motor was warm and now it's cold again. So I guess we're just gonna have to do a cold compression test. Now it's not the end of the world, but it is always better to do a warm compression test rather than a cold compression test, but it is what it is. As long as the numbers are consistent, we should be in good shape. Now, seeing that the spark plugs were pretty much new, seeing that there was a new cabin air filter, it gives me a little confidence that maybe this motor was taken care of, but we'll see. Okay, so doing a compression test is pretty much straightforward. Here is the compression tester. Most of the time they have a quick disconnect right over here, so you just quickly disconnect it like this. Then you just have to go ahead, thread this into where the spark plug goes, which is the easy part. It should be pretty easy. I also forgot to mention that you definitely want to take off your coil packs, disconnect them from the harness just so nothing sparks up. And then we also have to disconnect the fuel pump fuse. It's different for every car, but for this car, the fuel pump fuse is right over here. So let's just go ahead, pop this sucker right off. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, got it out, baby. Got the fuel pump fuse off, got the coil packs off. Now this car is ready to start cranking. It's always helpful to do this with two people because while one person cranks the car, one person can just look at the gauge and tell the other person when to stop cranking. If you've never done a compression test, it's honestly not that hard, guys. Just plug it in, make sure everything's nice and tight so no air leaks. Crank it over four times just so you can properly rotate absolutely everything. After you've cranked it, come back out here, look at the numbers. I'm hoping that this is above 100 PSI. Let's see. Then we're gonna go ahead on the whiteboard, write down all the compression numbers. Fingers crossed, we have some good results. Not gonna lie, I'm getting a little nervous now. Oh, okay. Okay, let's go. Cylinder number two is at 120. Awesome. So we're gonna call this cylinder number one, two, three, and four. I'm pretty sure this is number four. I'm pretty sure this order is wrong, but this is how we're gonna do it. First test, we got 120. Let's go ahead and check the others. The tester is hooked up to cylinder number one. Now let me show you guys what I'm doing inside the car. The car isn't gonna start, don't worry, but try not to keep it in gear because you don't want anything pushing forward. Make sure it's in neutral, throw the key in, and then just give it a crank and let it turn for a few turns just so that the air can properly go out. There we go, that's it. And let's go out, hopefully we have some Good numbers, some good results, and we are at uh, 100, 100 and just flat 100. I guess that's not bad. I was kind of hoping for like 115 at the least. Maybe I just didn't crank it long enough. Let's go ahead one more time. If it's still at 100, we're just gonna live with it. Clutch down and... Please be a better number. Please be a better number. Please be a better number. So nervous. Okay. All right. All right. We're at 115. That's not bad. Okay. Maybe I just didn't crank it long enough. We're at 115. That's not bad at all. 110 is nothing to be worried about, but I did want it to be just a little bit more than 110. So 115, I will take it. 115. Sorry about the bad handwriting. <laughs> just so nobody gets confused, let's just call this three. Let's just call this four. Cylinder number four on Subarus is usually the first cylinder to go out. So this is the one I'm most nervous about. We are at 120, that is some good news. So far the numbers have been looking really good. Now it is time for the sketchiest cylinder on these motors. From what I've heard, cylinder number four is the first one to start giving some issues. I got the compression tester hooked up to cylinder number four. I saved the worst for last. Let's go ahead, hopefully there is no damage. Is really freaking nice. Only cylinder number one was 120. It'd be amazing, but whatever. 
115, 120, 120, 120, we are mint. So when you're doing a compression test, having like 10 PSI up and down is fine. I don't even have a 10 PSI difference. I only have a five PSI difference, which is amazing. I know I had the paperwork to prove it, but now just seeing the proof in its own, like this motor was definitely rebuilt. I'm really happy with this actually. Like 120 PSI, that is freaking amazing, man. This battery on the other hand is not amazing. This thing needs to be cleaned up ASAP. That is really good. I'm really hyped. You guys know me. You guys know what this means. The motor is healthy. That means we are going to be beating the ever living shit out of this car. What I have for this car in store is going to get you guys really hyped. While I was compression testing, a package came for this car and it is in this monstrosity of a box. This thing is freaking huge, man. <laughs> It takes up like the whole garage. I'm not even gonna tell you guys what it is yet, but if you guys have any guesses of what this box could possibly be, let me know down in the comments. It's for this car and um, it's one of the things I'm really hyped about. I'm just so happy right now. Well, definitely do a compression test on your car, boys. Now, if the compression was low, if it was 120 on one cylinder and then 90 on another, I would definitely look into rebuilding the motor because that would mean something is wrong. But the fact that everything was pretty much in the same PSI range, that is really good. So I know I kind of just jumped right into everything without telling you guys what's going on. So let me just try to explain what's going on to you guys really fast. This is my new 2009 Subaru STI. And of course you guys can see that I got the hatchback version like I just said. My main goal for today was check out the condition of the motor. And so far with the compression numbers, I'm very satisfied. It tells me that the motor is really healthy and this car is going to be a good candidate for what we are going to do to it. Now, let me tell you boys, we are going to do some wild things with this car. Car. That's why I wanted to make sure the motor was able to handle what we're about to give it now You guys can see right now the exterior is in all right condition It's not in the best condition But that's okay because you guys already know that we are not sticking with this color this car is lightly modified It has a parent downpipe a parent cap back stock intake stock everything else pretty much It does have some engine goodies like ARP head studs. That's really it as of right now trust me guys we are going to Put this thing to good use. I'm really excited with the videos that we're gonna be able to create with this. And yes, unfortunately the GTR is gone. I am gonna miss that thing, even though it was a big pain in the butt for the past year that I've owned it and it drained out my wallet, a little part of me is still going to miss it. But I am really excited to be back in a Subaru and this time a turboed Subaru. I'm gonna get the full Subaru experience and I'm really excited for that. And I really hope you guys are excited for the videos that are gonna come with this thing because this thing is going to be fun. And I'm telling you guys, just believe me, this thing is going to be bad ass. But yeah, boys, what do you guys think about it? Of course now we definitely need to change the exhaust and I love the quad tip The quad tip looks absolutely killer, but yo, this hitch gotta go <laughs> What is anybody trailering with this car? This hitch is going to go This exhaust is also gonna go because this thing is way too quiet for me Probably put a fat Tome in there. You guys already know I love Tome. Oh, yeah, it has Tome headers too This car has Tome headers. I forgot to mention that Hopefully my neighbors don't chop my head off for this, but I want to let you guys hear the exhaust a little bit The sun isn't even down yet and where I live right now, it is below freezing. So it is so cold. I don't have a name for this thing yet. If you guys have any suggestions, leave it down in the comments because I'm completely stuck. I'm gonna wrap up this video. It is way too cold. I will catch you guys in the next one. Hopefully it will be warmer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.